Hey guys, it's me, Wendy. I'm going to bring you um, Tuesday's tutorial, and we're going to make this lovely card. And I used a gazillion products, but mostly I was wanting to experiment with the Ken Oliver colors or the color burst. And so I made this with the purple, the excuse me, the purple, the fuchsia, and the tangerine. And then I had done the lime green that I didn't use, so I'm going to use it this time. And so we're starting with watercolor paper, four inches by one and a half. And this tutorial, we're going to use the chartreuse, lime green, and tangerine. And this was the lime green, so I'll use these two. Then I have this Live Love Laugh um, stencil. And then we're using some Michael's cardstock, which is really thin. Um, but then I'm using the Stamp It Up cardstock, so it gives it some extra support. And then the watercolor paper and then the whisper white cardstock from stamp it up and I added just um, let's see that was four and an eighth times one and five eighths so we're just adding an eighth of an inch around so it's going to frame that piece and we're using a white gel pen. I'm using Fast Fuse. I'm also using the Mono Adhesive. I'm using the Stamp It Up Archival and an Aqua Painter. So this is a project that can get kind of messy. So have a baby wipe ready and then the aqua painter and then what I learned to use this and to not waste it is you put it in one of these little watercolor trays and just tap a couple of times until just a little glop of color comes out and then you probably have way too much on there as it is and I don't know if you can see that little bit of yellow in there and then that darker piece in the middle and that's really all you need so just get an aqua painter squeeze it until a couple of drops of water comes out and then just mix it and then I'm just swishing it on the watercolor paper and you can get it as dark or as light as you wish and this tangerine seems to just stay in a lighter color and then you can blot it off to get the excess water off and then add more color and it's really what appeals to you as far as color and I did want a lighter color so it looks like it was water colored and then to change colors I just have that until it's clear then I add a, some drops in the chartreuse and that's really limey and this way you're not sprinkling the powder on your paper and you're actually doing a more controlled application of it and I do like the effects you get when you put it on the paper but the powder does kind of spread out and goes all over the place 
and with that you might be wasting a little bit. So those are the three colors I'm thinking. And then this green is probably a tad darker. So what I'm going to do and see if I can see if that reacts again to the water. I don't know if that will, but it looks like it is. And I'm just going to try to see if I can blot it so it's a little bit lighter. And look at that, from that to that, if you can see. So it does react when you get it wet again. So I did get it to be a little lighter and I like that a lot. So I'm going to stop there and I am going to use my heat tool to dry these off and I will be right back. Okay, I got the watercolor paper dry and in my first card I let these pieces dry overnight because sometimes even though they feel, feel dry, I do have issues with my inks bleeding and I'm not quite sure if, you know, in the past I don't let things dry properly. Anyway, so if you have that issue let them dry overnight so they're absolutely dry and then we're just going to start with one and I am using some washi tape to hold this piece down and I am going to mask off a bit just so it doesn't slip and slide and blur the images. And you can just do that with painter's tape or washi tape. I like washi tape because it doesn't stick to the paper and rip the paper. Just want to make sure I get that word covered up. And then we're going to do the butterfly. And so I make my own daubers with one of the sponges. If you have a regular dauber, it is a little bit easier because it's more controlled. And I just kind of do a small circular motion so it gets into these little nooks and crannies because the, the thin little swooshes on the bottom and the top of this font, those little curly cues, it doesn't go into those little spaces as easily. So it's nice if you have one of the smaller daubers. But this sponge will work. Just take your time and just make sure the sections you are working on are all taped off and then just lift it up and then you have this nice image and I just love how that is nice and crisp and I am ooh, oh I'm sorry my baby wipe hit one of my cards for my next video Oh well, and I am cleaning my stencil off each time, and I have noticed that this archival ink stains. I'm not sure if there's a product that would help it not stain. and just dry that off and then we're going to the next piece and you want to make sure that you're getting clean pieces when you're adhering it down and making sure your fingers aren't inky and then 
just kind of lining it up because this one I did use a heart stamp once you have it lined up and I'm just getting some more washi tape so that it's clean and the other stuff you can just throw away. And I have this problem that if ink can go somewhere, I will always find a way to make a boo-boo. Okay, and then I'm going to put it down there just so it stays put. And then keep in mind how much space that's on the right side because um, I did emboss a stamp in the first one or this one. And so just keep in mind how big your stamp is and how much space you need in order to get it to the proper spacing. Then I do the same thing, just in a circular motion, adding the ink. Then just lifting it straight up. Being mindful not to smudge it. Oops, and that did rip a little bit, which I hadn't had problems with that before. But of course, because we're on film now, it's going to prove me wrong. So then if you have a little oops, then you can just add some color when you're done with the, with the stenciling. And then for the last one, This lap, I am just trying to get it in the center of this. There might be just a small portion that is hanging off the side. Again, we're going to do the circly, cir circularly. I keep making up words. The circular motion just to get that inked up. So I'm doing a circular motion, but I'm also pressing it into the stencil so that it gets in there. And I also noticed that my stencil moved a bit. So instead of going over it again, I just lift I just lifted it up and then because I didn't want to have a double image. And I am sort of this neurotic person that likes to clean stencils right away. I know others don't clean their stencils. 
and I am not one of those people. And so, let me see. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And I'm just going to, off camera, retouch that up and I'll be back. Okay, and then the next step is, I did go around the edges in the black. Now I do like the daubers for this because the sponge isn't always the neatest. I'm just trying to get some color around the edges. So you can do it in a lighter color. If you want to keep it in the same shade. I like the black because it makes it pop. So then once you have all the edges inked, then you can do the embossing. And I'm using the same stamp that I did before. And this is from a Unity, one of their kits. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to use the Adirondack Wild Plum embossing powder, which I thought goes well with these colors. And then just make sure you're getting your heart the right way. And it probably would have been better if I had got it lined up before I put the embossing powder on. Okay. And then just try to center it. You know me, I I'll eyeball everything, so it's not perfect. It's not perfect. And then just add some. And I always forget to do the the powder. And just go around the sides to get off the excess powder. And then I put the rest back in. So then I'll go ahead and heat that up off offline because you know how to emboss by now, right? Okay, so it's all embossed. And then the next step, what I was doing is just adding some highlights because it just seemed too dark for me. So I'm using a, a white gel pen. And I don't know who the maker is, but just one that you have on hand should be fine. And I'm just adding a, just a couple of marks. So it looks like some light. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just adding just a touch here and there.
Okay. So live, love, laugh. And then the next step would to be to adhere to the white, um, you know, background and then adhering that to the black. So in this step, I am using my fast fuse just so that it, because this is thick and you want it to stay down. So the hardest thing for me is to get this lined up so that there's equal amounts on all sides. So I tend to hold my fingers like this. So it's like this before I press it down. So I take it, these, the thumb and the forefinger and just hover as closely as I can without adhering it. And then when it looks like it's centered, then I just stick it down. And for me, that's probably the hardest thing of all because I eyeball things. If you have to measure it, that's fine. Do what works for you. For me, if I can avoid measuring, I will. And so again, I do this, and then I will hover and try to get it as even as possible. issues with the fast fuse because it always seems to unmount itself. But it's sticky. And then again, I'm going to hover. And you probably also want to make sure that the inking around the edge is completely dry because there is some res residual ink that comes off. And then with the card base, I do want to score it. And then I line these up so I can figure out my spacing. My goal is to try to get it to be equal in both the top and the bottom. And that looks really good. And I'm taking a pencil and I'm lightly putting a little dot in the corner. I mean, you can barely see it. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it on film. So then I'm... and just... and I do put the, the middle one down first so that the top and bottom can just be adjusted accordingly. This is probably the hardest part of the whole card is getting it down so that everything is centered. my little my little 
marks just to make sure I'm covering that up. Oops. And then just put it down straight down. Difficulty here with it sticking to my fingers, and then there. And so then I am using three of the metallic enamel dots, and I'm using st stars just because it it's. 4th of July today, and I thought that was appropriate, although I'm not using traditional colors. So I add the three stars. And then I like to use the mono adhesive to glue the backing. And make sure your cart is going the right way. And then make sure this is. And then I found this tip from Catherine Pooler. If the base is the same side, just prop it up so that it goes down perfectly. So there you go. Two Live Love Laugh cards and I'm really liking that. So this one's my favorite because it's got the purple and the fuchsia, but I also like this because it looks citrusy and summery and fun and happy. So let me know what you think. Hope you liked that tutorial and catch me in my next video for Wacky Wednesday. Or, or I'm also debating on Wendy's Wacky Wednesday and so um, thanks for watching hope you all have a safe and fun 4th of July with family and friends and I will catch you in my next video bye guys